You're watching a movie with a group of friends. All of a sudden, you're laughing at a very sad part of the movie. Or maybe it's a happy movie and you're uncontrollably crying happy tears. While emotional changes are normal after a stroke, moments like this can be embarrassing. Extreme emotional shifts after a stroke can happen for several reasons. Number one, the injury. If the area of the brain injured during the stroke is an emotional regulation center, you're likely going to experience emotional changes. Number two, mental health. If you're dealing with PTSD, depression, or anxiety secondary to the emotional trauma that is having a stroke, this can cause significant mood swings and overreactions. And number three, neurological condition. You may actually be experiencing a neurological disorder that can happen after a stroke. It's called pseudobulbar affect or PBA, and it's estimated that up to 52% of stroke survivors experience it. It's often classified as a mental health issue, but it is in fact a neurological condition. Regardless of where the extreme emotional shifts and reactions are coming from, they can be incredibly frustrating and embarrassing to deal with. But don't lose hope. There are ways to make it better. Let me walk you through some different techniques that you can use to better manage extreme emotional shifts after a stroke. The best place to start is by recognizing your triggers. What certain people, places, situations, or things cause those extreme emotional reactions to bubble up to the surface. It may more specifically look like being in a crowded space, having an intimate conversation with a loved one, or perhaps a disagreement with a loved one. Um, it may also be very happy or sad movies or even commercials. Now, we can't always avoid those situations or people because that's just our lives. But what we can do is better prepare for those triggers, those situations and people utilizing coping strategies. Because when you're better prepared, you can react more effectively in the moment to either prevent or lower the extreme emotional reaction from a 10 to a two. I've got eight different coping strategies I'm gonna talk with you about today. And the first is distraction. Sometimes in the midst of uh, an extreme emotionally inducing situation, you just need to distract yourself. Maybe that means pulling out your phone, watching a stupid TikTok video or Instagram reel, or looking at something else in your environment to get your brain off of that emotional response. For example, in 2012 and 2013, I was dealing with extreme panic attacks. During the day, during the night, they were keeping me from getting any sleep at all. What I found to be helpful was at night, I would watch really stupid late night TV shows and it was enough of a distraction for my brain to get away from the fear and panic to allow me to get into a more relaxed state. So sometimes distraction can take you from a really heightened emotional response to a much lower one. Now, the second strategy I wanna talk about is deep breathing. And listen, I get it. Deep breathing is talked about a lot, and I know a lot of people are tired of hearing about it, but it is talked about for a reason, and it's because it works. Deep breathing stimulates our vagus nerve when we're breathing from our abdomen, and it helps to stimulate the rest and digest system as opposed to the fight or flight system. So it's a relaxation nerve, essentially. So when we do deep breathing, taking in a deep breath, abdominally breathing, not from our chest up here, it can actually help to relax us into a better state and keep us from getting into that heightened emotional response. The third strategy I wanna talk about are other relaxation strategies. Might be like meditation, yoga, or even just being out in nature. Now, I'm not saying that if you're in the midst of a crowded space, you immediately just go straight into downward dog, <laughs> but if you can find ways to take a moment and quiet your mind in the midst of 
a triggering situation for you, sometimes that is enough to help induce a relaxation response and reduce the extreme emotional response. The fourth strategy is to change your position. Let's go back to the example of watching a very happy or a very sad movie. Maybe you're starting to feel those extreme emotions come up. Well, if you're sitting on the couch watching TV, stand up. Change your position. If you're not able to stand, lay down or go down to the side. Or if you're able, walk and go to a different room. Sometimes that change in position is enough of a distraction for your brain to inhibit that extreme emotional response going to a peak. The fifth strategy is to just completely get out of the situation. There are some times where you're just not comfortable enough and you just have to get out of it. And there is no shame in that. Perhaps if you are in a really crowded space, maybe you just say, I gotta get out of here. And you physically remove yourself from the situation. Maybe you're at a concert or a sports game or something like that. Take yourself to the restroom or have someone help you to the restroom. Get out of that situation that is triggering that emotional response and see if you're able to calm it down by just completely removing yourself from that situation. The sixth strategy is to talk with your family and friends. And I know that this can be a really hard one to follow through on because these extreme emotional shifts can be really embarrassing and frustrating. But when you talk with the people who care about you and let them know what's going on when you're having those extreme emotional changes or maybe inappropriate responses, that's gonna give them a clue in as to why you might be acting like that. It's not that you're trying to be inappropriate or that you're just so over emotional. You know, it's a neurological issue. You've been dealing with a lot of different things as a result of the stroke. So having them better understand can put you in a more relaxed state. So if those things do happen, you're not going to feel judged or you'll feel less judged and hopefully less embarrassed. The seventh strategy is exercise. This is more of a long-term game, but when we exercise on a daily or almost daily basis, our body is constantly releasing dopamine and endorphins, and those things make us feel good. They make us feel happy and at a better mental state. So by exercising daily or almost daily, you can get that flow of happiness going on in your body and in your brain. The last strategy is to manage or limit your stressors or triggers. And I think this one is best explained with some examples. So let's say that you do get extreme emotional changes in a crowd, and perhaps you are wanting to go to a concert. Well, maybe instead of buying a general admission ticket, you purchase a balcony seat. You're gonna be less involved in that giant crowd that might be standing up, and you may have a seat where you are further away from um, a bunch of big people around you. Second example is maybe you're dealing with a negative person in your life and every time you talk with them, you experience those extreme emotional shifts. Well, perhaps you go about setting some boundaries with this person and say, if you're going to talk about X, Y, Z, we're not gonna be able to hang out. Those topics really send me into an emotional spiral. Um, and that can be really hard to do, especially if that person is a member of your family. But this strategy is all about putting yourself first um, by limiting contact with those people who are completely negative in your life. You can reduce that extreme emotional reaction um, or prevent it from happening in the first place if you're limiting the contact with that person or setting those healthy boundaries into place. And one last thing that I'd like to mention, which is medication. There is currently only one FDA approved drug called Nuadexta, which treats pseudobulbar affect, uncontrollable crying, laughing, and inappropriate emotional outbursts. You know, if it's something that you're curious about or that coping strategies have not been working well for you, reach out to your doctor. It can't hurt to just have that conversation and see if it would be something beneficial for you and safe for you to take. All right, everyone, that's it for today. 
leave me a comment. Let me know what are some effective ways that you've found to deal with extreme emotional changes after a stroke. And as always, I'm leaving a link down in the description if you'd like to sign up for the email list, which gets you free stroke recovery tips and motivational emails, as well as a free copy of my ebook, The Stroke Recovery Pocket Guide. If you find value in what we do here at Post Stroke and you're able, please consider donating either via our PayPal or becoming a Patreon member, which gets you access to cool perks like social media shout outs and behind the scenes footage. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.